Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, Kotick launch yet another brand new bike, as do Pace, both two UK companies there. We check out the new Northwave Clan flat pedal shoe, and of course there's some amazing stuff from you lot. So first up on the news this week is British bike company Pace Research, or Pace Cycles Limited. They're based up in North Yorkshire and they've just unveiled their new trail hardtail called the RC627. The six meaning is aimed at a fork up to six inches of travel and a 27, of course, around 27 and a half inch wheels. Now this is it on screen in the kind of battleship gray, I think they call it primer gray, which I think is one of the coolest colors out there. Now, it's quite a long, low and slack, so no surprises there. Hardtail, British made again. It's made from British tubing manufacturer Reynolds. It's their 853 tubing. 27.5 inch wheels with a 65 degree head angle up there and clearance from 2.2 to 2.8 inch tires. Of course, most riders opting to run the plus size tires don't tend to go up to the three inch size because they wallow a bit. If you want a hardtail for high performance, 2.8 is about as big as you want. And there are some great choices in tires to suit that bike. Now there are four sizes available and they all have slightly shorter seat tubes per size to help accommodate longer dropper posts. On the shorter sizes, that's up to 125 mil, and on the longer sizes, up to the 170 mil posts. Of course, it's all in relation. Taller riders need more drop to feel the same as a shorter rider with less drop. Now, the reach is much longer than on the previous model, which was the 2018 model. So you're looking at about 50 millimeters longer per size. So it's just to accentuate that long growth of the front end, bringing back the stem length so you're getting that control, you're getting your body weight behind the front wheel axle, so it's gonna feel a lot more confident on fast, loose, rough, steep terrain. And of course, having the front wheel that bit further out front is also gonna make it climb better too because you've got more weight further forward. So not so much of that front wheel lifting on those steep climbs. So the reach varies on the sizes between 443 up to 493 millimeters from the small all the way up to the extra large set. And the frame set is actually a bit of a bargain. It's UK price, 575 quid. Now, I think it's a really, really nice looking frame and they've got those lovely slide out dropouts on there. So as standard, it's a 45 mil chain set, but you can adjust them up to 13 millimeters longer. Personally, if I had the size XL, I would break that all the way out and make the most of that, have the nice longer back end there. Although having a short back end is fun, no doubt. It makes the bike really twitchy and agile, but you've got that longer front end too. Myself, I'm a fan of a longer chain stay all the way for that more in the middle of the bike handling, but you can do that too. So have a look at it on screen. It's a super nice bike, forward thinking from Pace, and it's great to see them back with their new hardtail. Okay, next up in news is Mavic, the French cycling company, of course, have launched their entire 2019 range. Now we have mentioned a few bits and pieces on previous tech shows, but it's nice that the whole lot is up on their site now, it's all live. So that's a lot of the stuff that we saw at Eurobike and at previous bike shows. So first up, I wanna draw your attention to the D-Max shoes. So these are their flat pedal specific shoes. Check them out on the screen right now. So they're made from a unique material called Matrix, which is a French made material and it's made largely of Kevlar, so it's ultra tough, so perfect for all the abrasion and the abuse that mountain biking dishes out. But also something else that I particularly like about it is the fabric itself doesn't retain water. So I'm not suggesting that your feet stay dry in them, but what I am suggesting is that they're not gonna bog down and become thick and heavy like they can with if you run a, say, a pair of skate shoes or hiking boots. Once they get soaked, they become very heavy to ride in. These were designed to like deal with bad weather, so that's a really cool feature on those. Now, I've also got the Contour Grip outsole on them, so it's no secret that Mavic is a sister company along with Salomon, who makes some of the world's best trail running and off-road footwear. So the Contour Grip soles on them in the past has always been excellent on their clip shoes, and now with a flat pedal shoe version, I think that's gonna be an excellent sole. So nice one to see that. And there's a whole bunch of different models in there. There's high top ones with inside of ankle protection. There's low top ones, there's cheaper ones, more expensive ones, a really good solid range there. Now there's also the, the XA Matrix, which is their trail shoe. Now this has got kind of a bit of a funky look. I'm not sure how I feel about these. I think they kind of look a bit like color blocking, you know, when everything is the same color on a shoe, like there's an all red model, for example, this one on the screen. 
at the same time, I think they look really cool. And Mavic do make excellent clip-in cycling shoes, or clipless cycling shoes. In the past, they've had their Crossmax Enduro shoes, and before that, the Alpine XLs. So I have high hopes for them being excellent shoes. And of course, they're making the most of that new Matrix material, and the Contour Grip soles are seen on there, as all the others. There's a quick lace closure, and they also make women's models and all of those shoes, and they go down to size 3.5, which is good to know. So, oh, and they also do uh, half sizes, as well as whole sizes. So I know a lot of people that do struggle with that with shoes, so well worth factoring that in. Now also, the wheels are all available now. We've taken a look at some of the videos. I did that video all about their new hub system, which of course features the ID360 system. So that's their version of the ratchet system. Has the single spring on the inside of there dividing those ratchets. It's very low friction, but it's ultra, ultra reliable and a super positive engagement. It's also got contactless rubber seal, so they roll a lot faster than some other hubs and some of their own hubs from the past. Now also, it's quite cool to see that the rim widths, they've dedicated them now between XC trail and downhill. So the XC ones are between 20 and 20, sorry, between 22 and 25 mil internal. Trail is 30 to 40 because that accepts the B plus and the plus size tires. And enduro and downhill, 25 to 30 millimeters, depending on the particular rim. So they're very focused, as they always have been, on specific wheels and products for a specific genre of riding. Now, I think Mavic stuff's excellent. I think it's really cool that they're still churning out fantastic gear. Next up, if I reach down here, I have a set of the brand new Northwave Clan shoes. Now, these particular ones are Neil's because mine are a bit too dirty to uh, open up on set. As you can see, so there's two models available. There's a Clan and there's a Tribe. This is the Clan, so this is the first one to hit the shelves. And this is the, the higher end shoe. It's a very focused shoe on trail riding, basically. So you see the white section here, that's a TPU shank in the sole there. So that's designed to give it, basically make it very efficient for pedaling and not sort of wallow and flex the opposite way. So it's a very stiff and efficient shoe when pedaling, but it's got this really cool Michelin Gecko Plus rubber compound sole on there. Now, this rubber compound was developed uniquely with Michelin for these shoes. And up the front and at the back, you've got this nice lugging in the middle of the sole. You've got the slightly flatter section, which takes real good purchase on your flat pedals. The upper on them is very secure. It's got a big sort of heel box, a solid toe box on there. You've got an elastic retaining strap there for your for your laces, and it's generally a really nice looking shoe with great arch support and feel on the pedals. It's good stuff, but if that's not quite your fancy, then you might like the Tribe. That's the one on the screen now, and that is the next shoe coming out from Northwave. Now the Tribe is a slightly more street focused. It still has that Michelin sole on there, slightly different sole in fact than this one. This is their higher performance sole, but I suspect that a lot of riders are gonna like or maybe prefer the Tribe because the Tribe has a slightly more flexible sole, maybe a bit more akin to a skate shoe or something like a 510 Freerider. So it's kind of cool that they've got the two different options available and they're gonna be on sale very soon, so keep your eye out for those. Now, in last week's show, Kotick had just unveiled their Soda Max, which is their titanium frame, an absolute wonder piece of a bike. Now they've just announced another one. So this is the Rocket Max. So check this bad boy out on the screen now. So again, this is another British designed bike. And in fact, the front end is British made out of 853 Reynolds tubing, very similar in fact to the pace we mentioned earlier on the show. Out back, it has an aluminium, like a 6066 T6 swing arm with the Sintase X12 boost system, and the linkage, of course, is also made in the UK. So, it's a very interesting bike. So, it's designed around 29 with 2.5 or 27.5 up to 3 inch tyres. It's got their long shot geometry on there, which is Kotick's take on that longer, almost like forward geometry. We'll go into that in a second. So, it's designed around 160 millimeter travel fork, so you know that this is a pretty serious bike from the off. And it's got a 63 degree head angle, <laughs> yes. So, loving the fact that that's slack. It would accept the big wheels as well. So this thing's gonna go like a freight train. It's got a 75.3 degree seat angle on there. Nice and steep, pushing a good efficient position above the BB, so we know it's gonna climb really well as well. And it's designed around a 25 to 45 mil stem. So the reach across the four sizes ranges from 443 up to 515. And of course, everyone knows I like a long reach. 515 is the same as my Nuke Proof. And of course, the Scott is 505, so that's a little bit shorter. 515 is banging, especially for the taller folk out there. And of course, there's four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. 
So it's a one by specific back end on there now, slightly different from previous models. Uh, and it's got an integrated one up chain guide on there. So, one up obviously are a component manufacturer that make chain guides, but this one's been designed to incorporate into the frame as well. So, a really neat looking device there. It's also got ISCG 05 mounts. So, if you want to run an alternative chain guide or a fully enclosed one, you've got those choices there. And generally, it looks pretty badass. <laughs> All right, now it's time for Bike Cave, which as we all know is where everyone keeps their bikes. Maybe it's the garden shed, maybe it's the back of the van, maybe it's the outbuilding of your house. Wherever it is, wherever you tuck your bikes up, we wanna see them. So take some pictures and send them in. Use our uploader, don't forget to use that. It's a really easy way of sending in nice pictures and being able to give us all the information we need to big you up. So send your stuff in and we'll read it out on next week's show. So first up this week is from Justin in the Lake District. Um, just my little bike cave. Um, so Justin is keeping his stuff inside his house. Uh, of course, you know, not everyone has room to have stuff, but obviously you've got to make the most of what you have. I see he's got a nice tarpaulin on the ground there. I'll tell you what, Justin, a little tip for you, something that's a bit neater, but also really handy. Get yourself a turbo trainer mat. So they're fairly cheap and they're made of rubber. They're the exact length of your bike because they're designed to protect the floor on your house or wherever you use a turbo trainer, it gets sweat dripping off you. And they're also perfect, they look really neat and they look quite factory as well, they look very cool. But it looks like you're doing a good job with your little setup here. You see plenty of cans of like, it was a, a Muckoff MO95 and various different tools. There's some Muckoff cleaner on the back there, some bio degreaser by the looks of it too. Um, track pump, a couple of bikes stacked up behind the sofa. Pretty good little setup you've got there to be fair. It looks like you could probably do with some kind of stand, might make it a bit easier to work on there, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. And your bikes, you've got a Vitus Summit VR SLX, that's a good bike, and a 2017 Scott Spark, very nice. Good selection and always cool to see some bikes being worked on at home, so thanks for sending that one in. Right, next up is from David in South Africa. Wow, now that is another amazing setup. Rubber flooring in the workshop is always good. And then your workshop setup looks phenomenal, dude. Uh, I'm riding a 2016 Scott Spark full suspension. I took the photo at my house in South Africa. So me and my dad just finished painting the bike. We paint and build and repair bikes. So the S-Work Specialized there, I guess that's completely custom you've done yourself. I've not seen one in that color. That looks phenomenal. Also matches your tool chest as well. So you've got the blue rocker on there and the tool chest is blue and orange. So is that a snap-on that you've custom painted yourself or? Yours looks great. I love the pegboard there with the lighting. That looks really good. Good workspace there. Also room for a stool under there too by the looks of it. And then what looks to me like a, a wardrobe. I guess you might keep your riding clothes in there. I know I would if that was my home. Oh man, there's another shot of that. Specialised. That looks wicked. So you've done the forks as well. You've got the Roval decals on the wheels in the same orange. Dude, that looks so trick. It was really good, mate. Oh, and we're out of bike cave, unfortunately. But please continue to send your pictures in. And don't worry, you don't have to have a place like David that looks that amazing, although we do love to see those Formula One style garages. I equally love just a messy garden shed because that's what I've always had in the past and it's something homey about working in a shed and amongst the spiders and the cracked panes of glass and stuff. It's got a bit of character. Whatever your bike caves are, please continue to send them in. See you next week. All right, now it's time for Rewind, which is our retro section of the show where we pay homage to all the old stuff which we started riding mountain bikes with. Old bikes and kit progressed into the amazing tech that we have today. If there's any stories you want to know about where products developed and where they, where they came from, who developed them, who did it first, let me know and we'll pick up those stories in future shows. But if you've got any shots of old stuff you used to have or maybe your friend's got tucked away in his garage, get some pictures and get them into us. Use the uploader, as always, really cool to see that stuff, and we'll pick it up on next week's show. For now, I'm jumping into what is probably one of my favorite bikes of all time. So this is a 1990 Klein Attitude. It belongs to Phil in Canic, well, it says Canic Chase, so 1990. Um, I, I'm just like, blown away. Look at the condition of this thing. I mean, I said it's an old picture, so it's probably not in that condition now. Um, if you owned a bike like that, you were pretty serious about riding and racing in those days. So when the Klein Attitude came out, I think they weighed about 20 pounds, which was like, in those days, was almost nothing for a mountain bike. Don't get me wrong, it's, like it's pretty light by today's standards as well, except today we have full suspension bikes weighing that much. This was 
a rigid bike basically. So it has a mission control one piece bar and stem on there and I think it had their own steerer system on the inside there. I can't quite remember, it might be an evolution like inch and a quarter or something like that. I kind of forget but their own fork as well. That pink, white and green, oh, just the colours look incredible on there. Very, very nice looking bike that. Can't quite see your tyres and stuff that are on there. Oh man, there's a shot of you racing it as well. How cool is that? So good. It looks like you're wearing like a pair of Oakley razor blades or something like that. Probably about right for the time. You've got one of the old classic mushroom helmets everyone used to have. Of course, you know, we didn't have the cool kit that we do these days and the sport in those days actually. It was quite hard to look cool. The bikes were mega cool, but the riding kit was all over the place. A, a mixture of Ron Hill tracks to bottoms and roadie cycling tops and all sorts of stuff. But dude, you're, you're shredding on that bike. <laughs> really cool. And you're still riding it now, which is nice to know. Thanks for sending that in. And also from Phil is he sent in a Gerber Cool Tool for 1990. I remember the Cool Tool. That's mental, that's so old. Do you know what, I don't remember them being made by Gerber. I remember the name Cool Tool, a number of my friends had them. So what you got, uh, four, five, six millimeter and eight millimeter Allen keys, uh, a crank socket on there, adjustable spanner, chain tool, and a Phillips or crosshead uh, PH basically screwdriver for adjusting your rear mech. So actually, by all accounts, a pretty flipping useful tool. Um, looking good. It looks like you still use it as well, which is nice. Uh, next up is from Joe, and this picture, wow, this is taking a porcupine rim. Um, basically, that's some of my favorite all-time riding on earth, in Moab in Utah. And uh, this is a Turner Stinger. So, wow, I remember the Stinger. This was the one that had the pull shock on it. These were quite rare. Uh, yeah, the Stinger featured a pull shock, custom built by me, with a Marzocchi Atom Bomb, uh, Syncross steel cranks, Max, um, Mavic 517 ceramic rims, Titanium spokes, Hope tie rear uh, hub on there, zip carbon front hubs, IRC Mythos tires. Dude, IRCs were wicked tires back then. Whatever happened to IRC? They made some amazing tires, like Cujo and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's a shame. I love to see IRC back on the scene. They had those really cool, they weren't like gumball, but they were like brown sort of sidewalls on them. They looked really good as well. Good casing as well, actually, I seem to remember from those. And in fact, they couldn't really do much wrong. I think IRCs were amazing back then. XTR Met Grip Shift X-Ray. I had some of those that they soon lost their colour in the British winter and they kind of went from clear to sort of a murky browny colour and actually looked pretty cheap by the end. Uh, covered them up with the little yellow stickers on like Tomac had though because they looked cool. Um, so I just ignored the fact that they perished a bit but they looked good with the yellow stickers. XTR V brakes, Avid Ultimate Lever. So I'm guessing that was pre sort of SRAM Avid days when the Avid ones were just all machined aluminium. So later on they went to a forged process, I think. Um, obviously as a production increased on those. Flight Trans Alp saddle. Was the Trans Alp the one with the the side slightly trimmed off so you could slide off the back of the saddle? Well, I think it I think it might have been. Speaking of which, I found an old custom flight saddle I've got that um, uh, Mr. Salatalia made for me, actually. I'll have to show you on the show. It's not one of the more uh, classic ones, it's a slightly more modern one, but a classic shape, and it's got my name hand stitched onto it, which is a bit of a bit of a surprise when that turned up on my desk. Um, yeah, I found that in another box. Been moving house, so keep finding all these old retro goods tucked away. So I might do a bit of a show and tell at some point. It's got found some pretty cool old stuff. Uh, Control Tech stubby bar ends. Really miss that bike. Yeah, that's really really nice, Joe. Wicked picture as well. Great to see that. In fact, have a look on screen now and you'll see a picture of me in almost exactly the same place. And there's another one there of me with a guy called Israel Romero. He's now actually, he's one of the developers of Mondraker Bikes, in fact. So at the time he was a journalist on one of the Spanish magazines. And that was an amazing trip. I think that was when Trek launched their Remedy, the carbon one, the first time around. Man, that was a hell of a trip. Did some amazing riding. That was my first time riding Moab and I was absolutely hooked. Uh, couldn't believe it didn't go any sooner. And uh, really need to go back. But wicked, thank you for sending that in, Joe. Super cool to see that and a great trip down memory lane. Please continue to drag out those old pictures and all that old tech. We love seeing that stuff. It's really, really cool part of the show. So see you next time, guys. All right, now it's time for the top mods. This is all the modifications that you make to your bikes to make them your own. And what I mean by that is all those little things that you do to customize your bike to make sure it's a little bit different and all the other ones out there. Could be changing your grips, your tires, could be repainting it. Whatever it is, however big or however small, 
take some pictures of your modifications and send them in. Use that uploader service that we have, it's so easy to use. There it is again at the bottom of the screen just as a reminder and it's also in the link below this video so you can just click on that and it'll take you straight to the uploader. Super easy to pick the pictures from your hard drive, tell us a bit about them and upload. Job done. So send them in and we'll put them on next week's show. First up is from Nelius in South Africa. Cool, another South African. This is my Merida 120 29 full sus and my Giant Revel 29 hardtail. For my 120 I upgraded the drivetrain from Shimano Dior 2x10 to SRAM GX Eagle. Nice, a 1x12. Um, with a South African C6 32 tooth chainring with two mil chainring spaces to improve the chain line. Hey, that's a wicked little hack. Nice job there. Um, and a Sunrace 1150 cassette. Yeah, they're really good actually, good value those. Um, I also uh, upgraded my rims to 30mm internal width Rapide, a South African brand, uh, TR30 Enduro rims with pillar double butted downhill spec spokes laced on the original hubs. I also upgraded my dropper remote to a one by style lever from Rapide, uh, that same South African brand. Also from Rapide is a Pro 35 uh, high rise control bar, 35mm uh, bar basically in stem. 35mm stem as in length as well as a diameter with a 780mm 25mm sorry 780mm wide 25mm rise high bar. Man, this is a you've done a lot of stuff to this. Upgraded the tires from Max's Forecaster and Crossmark 2 combo to Mini and DHF and SS. So basically you've really hammed this bike up into quite a hard hitting rig by the sounds of the stuff you've put on it. Um, a lot of stuff you've done to these, it's very cool to see. And it looks great as well, actually. Good paint job, the dropper post looks great on there. Nice seed bottle cage too. Hey, thanks for sending those in, Nelius. That's a good selection of stuff that you've done to your bikes to improve them. All right, next up is from Kyle in Litchfield. And this is a Trek Roscoe 8 2019. So it's a brand new bike uh, with SRAM Eagle NX 1x12. So here's a picture of my box fresh brand new Trek Roscoe 8 stock and a picture of it with some cosmetic upgrades. I fitted a GMBN front mudguard, wee, way to go. Um, Elite Cannibal XC bottle cage with a GMBN bottle, sweet. And an XL R saver, so that's a little rear mudguard, just a little flap that sits on the sandals just to keep your, your hole clean, pretty much. Um, looking good, mate, yeah. So a Garmin 820 Edge with performance package, AMS XL frame guard, stop cables rubbing. Uh, Lifeline rubber frame protectors, yeah they're good though, so actually I've got some of those. Um, and before I go tubeless, some slime inner tubes. Yeah they work okay, they'll do the job, but um, once you go tubeless mate, you'll never go back. Um, I know a lot of people do get put off by the fact it could be messy if you're changing tyres and if, if your sort of rider likes to change your tyres, maybe it won't suit you. And obviously on some combinations of rim and tyre it can be a bit of a pain. But um, we've made plenty of videos on how to get around that. So if you struggle setting your bike up tubeless, check our videos out. But looking good. And thanks for supporting us with a GMBN uh, mud guard and bottle on there. I think you could probably do with the, uh, the head tube cap as well there. So for this top of the stem there, I think that looked pretty sweet on your bike. But looking nice. I really like the look of that bike actually. Really modern hardtail. It looks great in that sort of battleship grey. It's really mean, doesn't it? Nice stuff. Oh, and there we go, and that is enough top mods for this week. And now it's time for Tech of the Week, and this week I have something very cool in a wheel bag right in front of me here. I have a set of the brand new Crank Brothers Synthesis wheels. So this is the brand new wheel set from Crank Brothers, and they're very different to anything they've done before, and in fact, quite different to what a lot of other manufacturers have done. So there's two designers behind them, there's Mellow Boomister, who's famous for making a single skin rim design, which is quite a flexible uh, rim that gave you a lot of compliance. And then Jason Shears, who's famous for, of course, for making Envy rims. Of course, Edge were the first ones, the first production carbon mountain bike rims, which are insanely strong and stiff. So very two schools of thought there. So Crank Brothers, the approach they took was get those two designers together and put them into a bit of a mixing pot and see what they could come up with. And then with all the testing they did with team riders who would try different combinations of rim widths, rim thicknesses, spoke tensions, and all that sort of stuff, the general consensus was that they liked to have a super stiff and strong rear wheel and a slightly more compliant front wheel. And I think the decisions were pretty much unanimous. Everyone picked, or at least over 90% of the people picked, that option, which surprised, I think, both Mello and Jason. 
So it just goes to show by having two designers at both the top of their game, but from completely different specs, you can build something that actually people don't realize they need or want until they actually try the combo. So the theory is out back, you've got a 32 spoke wheel, you've got higher spoke tension and different spokes on here and you've got slightly more material on the rim itself. The rim is a hookless design, so it's tubeless, straight out, and it's designed to be incredibly stiff and incredibly strong and impact resistant, and I emphasize that point. There's also limited lifetime warranty on these wheels. Up front is 28 spokes with less tension and slightly lighter weight spokes, and the whole point of that in combination with the slightly less material on the rim, even though in the downhill rims certainly they're the same width, on the Enduro ones the rear is slightly narrower. The point of that is to allow more compliance up the front there. So the whole point of that is to reduce fatigue to you, to your hands, and allow the front wheel to track the ground a bit better. When you have an insanely stiff front end, unless you're brutally strong, it can be near impossible to hold a line. So by having a more compliant front end on the bike, you get more grip, you get more traction, ultimately more speed and control. And this is the set of wheels that offers exactly that. Now there's three different wheel sets. There's an XC 29er based wheel set, there's Enduro and there's Downhill. They all have slightly different prices, slightly different widths, but fundamentally it's the same set of wheels. And there's two different hub options. There's a more affordable option and then there's the Project 321 options, which come in two options as well. So these have the magnetic pull system on the inside. It's almost a friction-free design, and they come in quiet and loud options. So it depends if you prefer the stealthier feel, or if you want something to let everyone know that you're coming down that trail. It's a very, very cool concept from Crank Brothers, and I'm really pleased that they've actually got this done by working in conjunction with two of the very top designers in the wheel field. I think this is an excellent product from Crank Brothers and I can't wait to try a set. And now it's time for bike build. Of course, there isn't anything new on bike build this week other than the fact that you can win the bike. That is it on screen now, the size large Santa Cruz Nomad as voted for by your good selves and you can win it. It's a complete one-off. It's got loads of cool components on it. Be sure to check the video out, click through to the link and send us a video. But well, I can't emphasize this enough. This is not about a high quality video or having to go out and shred some trails and that. It's not about that. We just wanna know who is the best person to give the bike to. So tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us what the bike would mean to you. Or if you're entering on behalf of someone else, tell us what it means to them if they could win the bike. We wanna just give the bike to the right person. We're gonna be selecting a short list and then we're gonna be putting the list on the show and it's gonna be down to viewers to vote for who wins the bike. So make your en entry a really good one and hopefully you could win the bike. Good luck. There we go, there's another weekly GMBN Tech show in the bag. Hopefully you enjoyed the show and hearing about all those cool products in news earlier on. Make sure that you enter the bike build competition by clicking down here. Go straight through to the video where you get to see the bike in all its glory and find out about that. And for our latest maintenance video on everything about rear derailleurs, front derailleurs and how the shifting mechanism works, click right down here and it tells you how to get around stuff if it goes wrong. As always, click on the round globe to subscribe to GMBN Tech and give us a thumbs up if you like mountain bikes and tech.